mind my name. You wouldn't know it if I told you. I never won a big race here or anywhere. Just a boy up from nowhere, trying to get somewhere driving a race car. Yes, sir. That's why I'm here. Darlington. Been dreaming half my life about Darlington, about getting good enough to run here. Now I'm so scared, I wish I was any place else. My heart's running louder than my engine. Well, here we go. I got no chance to win. Too much fast equipment up ahead. Well, too many drivers better than me. Don't even think about winning. Just worry the man ahead don't spin, don't drop oil, don't bounce off the guardrail right in front of me. No way in the world of missing him if he does. It's a nice cool day, but I'm in a sweat already. Don't think you'd be any different. Then it happens. So fast you can't think. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a car get sideways. I squeak through, bouncing off the guardrail. A couple other fellas weren't so lucky. There's the yellow light. Hold your boot off the throttle. Get her slowed down from 130 and keep a sharp eye for more trouble. I ease past the wreck and pray nobody got hurt. Thank the Lord it wasn't me. I still got a chance to run this race. Track's clear and they give you the green. So pick your groove, mash the throttle and move out. That's Curtis Turner, number 14, Joan Bobby Joms and Jimmy Pascal, the way to go. A million people know those names. Someday they'll know mine. That's why I'm here at Darlington. Don't you worry about us. We're running for money, for glory, and because racing's in our blood. We're glad to take the risk. Things happen, well, it's part of the game. Driver education, they don't teach in high school. We try to stay out of each other's way. And we never forget that Darlington's a tough old track. You gotta treat it respectful. what they call us rookies. Don't mean we're scared. Just a warning to everybody that we're 130 mile an hour student drivers. Back home, we're top dog on quarter mile and half mile dirt tracks. Darlington's different. Big league. I'm going against 43 of the best racing cars I ever saw. Sharpest drivers and mechanics in the business are going after that $100,000 in prize money. The old timers say, I'd rather run anywhere else, but I'd rather win Darlington. They claim it's the toughest track on the NASCAR circuit. Guess I better practice some. The trick is to learn your way around without tearing up the equipment. Looks right easy, don't it? That's the way this track has it fooling you. Notice how tight we've got to run against the guardrail in number three corner. Behind the wheel, it's a thrill, let me tell you. Of course, the track's not the only worry. If a driver like Junior Johnson's behind you, you just naturally ease over. If you don't, You'll get by, somehow. Or take Freddie Lorenzen. Won more than $250,000 by racing. I never won but a couple of hundred back home. I got to think he can beat me. Now, if my name was Buddy Baker, 
I could latch on to some experience free of charge. Buddy's dad's a fellow named Buck Baker. And old Buck's run more than 6,000 miles here and won this race three times. Experience. That's what counts at Darlington. That's why the rookies listen when old timers like Ned Jarrett talk. Man needs all the help he can get to beat this track. But when all the advice and practice is done with, man's got to get the job done by himself. Maybe that's what brings the crowds to watch the qualification. We're doing something they can only dream about. It's a four lap run against time. Fastest qualifier starts at the front. Now look at Junior Johnson in that Ford. He's running 137.5 miles an hour. New record. But Johnson makes it look as smooth and easy as a Sunday drive. We got so much to do, we don't hardly watch qualifying. The experienced mechanics have a thousand little secrets to help them beat this track. We got to learn them one by one. There's a lot of tricks to setting up a car for high bank and flat turns both, and make her strong for 500 miles. There ain't enough hours in the day. Wish I was relaxed as Junior Johnson and Herb Nab, his mechanic. Well, the hair don't always beat the tortoise. It's mighty hard to sleep around Darlington. Some fool thing going on every minute. No sooner is qualifying over than they get a regular war started. It's that same old war that's been going on 100 years or more. Now, this is South Carolina. The race is called the Southern 500, and they don't believe what them Northern scholars put in the history books, no sir. So don't you bet on the winner. Looks like them fearless Southern boys is a-chasing the Federals off the fourth turn and down the straightaway. Although the Confederates is severely wounded, it's mostly Federals that bite the asphalt. When the firing stops, the flower of Southern manhood has won the day. Armistice. No better kind of war than this. Short and sweet, and nobody hurt. Thank you kindly for the battle. See you all again next year. You think them Yankees ever get to win? Parade's a wonderful thing. Gives the kids a chance to play what they've been practicing all year. Gives the rest of us a good excuse not to do Saturday chores. And gives the town a right fine reason to turn off the stoplights, detour the traffic, and enjoy the fun. The U.S. Marine Corps Band sure brightens the day. Doc Adams is here. Stepped right out of gun smoke on the TV screen. Got his sidekick with him. Fella named Festus. Milburn Stone and Ken Curtis are two of the finest actors you'd like to know. Although the actors come from Hollywood, the clowns are homegrown. The Florence, South Carolina Shrine Imps. Of course, the kids are homegrown too. When the kids grow up, we get a crop that compares with the best. These girls, all from South Carolina, are here in Darlington to compete in the Miss Southern 500 beauty pageant. Yes, sir. Parade's a wonderful thing. Gives us a chance to stare at pretty girls, which we do, anyhow, only not so obvious. and right back to the racetrack, which sure looks different at night. They've locked up the race cars and turned the main straightaway into a parade ground for the beauty pageant.
The girls first appear in evening gowns, then wait backstage for a turn in bathing suits. Everybody here is paid a dollar admission, which is used to help Darlington's underprivileged children. So they're staring in a good cause. I'm glad to leave the judge and experts, including Festus and Doc. If I had to pick just one, I'd be awake all night thinking about those that got away. There's the winner, Miss Vicki Johnson of Hartsville. Happy as can be, but crying. You just can't figure, women. Vicky gets her royal crown from Sherry Sellers, retiring queen, and the trophy from the president of the raceway, Bob Colvin. George Brain of the Pure Oil Company gives Vicky a mink stole, and Ed Hagen, on behalf of the Falstaff Brewing Corporation, presents a college scholarship. He's the only big spender on stage who didn't get kissed. Vicky's first job as Miss Southern 500 will be to kiss the winner of the race. Oh, how I wish that kiss would be mine. This is it. Race day. Just about now, you wonder if you can hold down your breakfast. Start near the back, like me. You don't hope to win. I just want to run good enough for somebody to notice. I want everybody to know I can drive smart, fast, and smooth. Yes, sir, I'd like that. It happened to Freddie Lorenzen. He's a star now. He just waves and the crowd cheers. I'd like that too. Dick Hutcherson's a rookie here with a great reputation and a factory-sponsored car. That's another thing I want. Jim Pascal's relaxed. Maybe when I've run 4,000 miles here, I'll be able to smile. Marvin Pants has run second. Guess how much he wants to win. Junior Johnson, fastest qualifier, but never won the Southern 500. I wonder if these old veterans still get that feeling in their stomach when the man says, gentlemen, start your engines. engine fires, I forget my mechanic, I forget my home, I pretty near forget my own name. I'm a race driver, and I'm rolling with the fastest field ever to run on the Darlington Raceway. That's something I want to tell my kids. Keep your fingers crossed. It's a mile and three-eighths around. First two turns are high bank. A 40-foot drop over that guardrail. Six brands are racing. Ford, Plymouth, Mercury, Dodge, Chevrolet, Pontiac. More than half the field are Fords. There's a crowd of about 60,000. Amazing when you think that the town of Darlington has only 6,000 people. Papers say that fans have come from 50 states. Off the back stretch into the third turn. Flat, tricky. To go fast through here, you've got to wipe the paint off the right side of your car and leave it on the guardrail. They call it the Darlington Stripe. I'll be running faster than ever in my life. It scares you to think. Turn four. The pace car scoots out of our way. If our lineup looks good, the starter will give us the green. There it is. Here we go. Nice clean start. Junior Johnson shows us the way through the first turn. Freddie Lorenzen drops behind him. The rest of us just trying to stay out of trouble. It's a three car race. Johnson, Lorenzen, Marvin Page. Junior Johnson drops out of the high fast groove near the fence. It looks like he's heading for the pits. Freddie Lorenzen takes charge.
Johnson's engine sick. Lorenzen's flying. Distributor's broken. That car won't run anymore today. This racing game is a heartbreaker. You better believe it. Lorenzen's running like an outlaw. Pat's chasing him like a sheriff. There's a spin. It's Bjorn Skeen, a rookie. Oh! Red Wickersham catches him broadside. Bert Robbins slides and nudges Skeen's wrecked car. Somebody must have dropped oil in that third turn. Robbins is able to keep moving, but he's out of the race. Flagmen and caution lights around the track warn us to slow down. Reb Wickersham walked out of that car with a few scratches, but Bjorn Skeen was pinned inside and cut free by the rescue squad. He's been rushed to the hospital. When the track is clear, the safety car heads for the pits, and Fred Lorenzen puts his foot down. Marvin Patch right behind him. Daryl Derringer holds down third spot. Earl Balmer, his teammate, is fourth. Daryl Derringer driving the Mercury moves up to challenge Patch to second place forward. Patch's crew doesn't like the look of it. There goes Derringer, dropping past the third place. Derringer wants to lead. He's moving up on Fred Lorenzen. Derringer takes the lead. It might be that Freddy's holding back. 500 miles is a long, long race. Patch is in trouble. He's losing power. Looks like his engine's gone. Older Marvin! When an engine blows, it drops oil where your own wheels can find it. It's a feeling you don't forget. Pant brings it down off the wall and parks it smooth as you please. Derringer is setting a 136 mile an hour pace. Fred Lorenzen staying right with him. Another engine blows. Junior Spencer bends a little fence, but that guardrail keeps him inside the ballpark. Spencer will win about $500 today, but a new engine costs thousands. That's racing. While the oil is cleaned off the track, most of the leaders pit for fuel and tires. We lose the least time pitting under the yellow. A good crew can give you 20 gallons of gas, a couple of new tires, and a pat on the back in less than 40 seconds. Don't think your crew goes to sleep when you pull out. They're busy checking tire wear to figure out how many stops you'll need and how the chassis is handling. Buck and Buddy Baker are both in trouble. Buddy's car, number 87 Chevy, is finished. And Buck's Plymouth is overheating. The old pro turns his car over to son Buddy. Guess there's a time to take it easy and let the youngster do the hard work. Buck's won this race three times. He don't have to prove anything. Sam McQuaig, Ford number 24, and Cale Yarborough, Ford number 27, to grab first and second spot, with Derringer breathing hard on their necks. Lorenzen's 10 seconds back, waiting. These chargers have everything going for them. Nerve, enthusiasm, and first-rate equipment. McQuaig's doing what we all dream about, leading the pack in his second Darlington race. Yarbrough's trying to pass. They're in deep trouble. Cale Yarbrough's over the wall. He never even touched the guardrails. He sailed down that 40-foot slope. McQuaig slides through the infield. Leroy Yarbrough was clipped as he tried to avoid the collision. His trunk lid was torn off. Sure glad I wasn't close when it happened. The pit crews, half a mile away, know something's wrong, but no one knows what. That's McQuaig's crew hoping that Sam will come around, but knowing deep in their souls that he should be here by now. Cale Yarborough's mechanic, Banjo Matthews, listens to the broadcast of the race, hoping for news. 
That car he so carefully put together lies at the bottom of a hill, a hundred feet outside the guardrail. There's no word yet on Kale. The announcer has him in sight. Kale's okay. The news goes on the pit board for the rest of us. Mighty good to know. The Roy Yarborough, no relation to Kale, parks it. Too battered to race. He pushed his Chevy right up there with the leaders. Sam McQuaig's all right. You can imagine how he feels. One minute leading the race and almost counting that $20,000 first place money. Then half a minute later, he's awarded 29th position in prize money of $575. Even so, he's a lucky fella. Even luckier is Cale Yarborough. Not a scratch. A sail through the air like an astronaut, he said. By 250 miles, a lot of cars are out of the race. Earl Balmer, Derringer's teammate, has real steering trouble. He's through. Buddy Arrington drops a wheel on the front stretch. It's a close one, but Arrington makes it to the pits. Gets a new tire and goes back into the race. Dick Hutcherson tangles with the wall in another car. Hutcherson ran with the leaders until slowed by this pit stop. Jim Pascal Chevy leads for a while before his hopes go up in the smoke of an overheated engine. Pascal's been trying to beat this track for 16 years. He hasn't done it yet. One by one, the front runners drop by the wayside. Only Daryl Derringer and Fred Lorenzen are left to battle it out. There's a showdown in every race, a time when you don't hold nothing back. Now's the time a man runs. I mean runs. They're turning laps at 138 miles an hour, faster than the track record. The fans are going wild, but the pit crews are worried. Lorenzen's mechanic is Jack Sullivan who set up a winner here for Fireball Roberts. Derringer is driving for Bud Moore, whose cars took Joe Weatherly, Speedy Thompson, Buck Baker to victory on this track. Lorenzen's Ford is in the pit, less than 60 miles from the checkered flag. It could be a regular pit stop. The hood is up. The crew's not rushed around. That's bad news. Lorenzen's out of his car. Engine trouble. Suddenly, Derringer's heading for the pits. He's on fire. Derringer's got a four-lap lead on the rest of the field. His nearest challenger is Ned Jarrett, driving Ford number 11. Derringer's in trouble. A grease seal on the rear axle's given way. But with less than 60 miles to go, Derringer's gonna try to run for it. Lorenzen's through. He won the Rebel 300, and he's won just about everything else in racing. But he's never won the Southern 500. I thought I had it in the bag this time, he said. Jarrett's car, now second, is running hot. Jarrett's reduced speed trying to cool the engine. He's still fast enough to take most of us. But is he fast enough to catch Derringer? Only 16 of the 44 starters are still running. Derringer is trying to run without using his brakes. When he does brake, the heat of the hot brake drum ignites the grease leaking out of the rear axle. Watch it! Derringer can't handle that first turn without brakes. If you want to try, you're welcome to it. That axle is hot! Buddy Baker, driving his dad's Plymouth, makes a last-minute pit stop. He's pushed that car into third place, even though he scraped the wall doing it. But 25-year-old Buddy's done a terrific job at driving. Old Buck's mighty pleased. 
Derringer gives up. He pulls off the track less than 20 miles from the finish line. With Derringer out, Jarrett's car owner, Bondi Long, gives his driver the high sign. Jarrett eases off, lets the tail enders pass. It's the first chance we've had all afternoon to pass a leader. Feels right good. The last lap. Jarrett's got second place Buddy Baker for company. But Baker's too many laps behind to worry about. There's Ned Jarrett taking the checkered flag in the 16th Southern 500. Let me tell you something. One of these days, I'm going to make my crew as happy as that. With Johnny Reb perched on the hood, Ned Jarrett in Ford number 11 eases into the winner's circle. This is Jarrett's first victory on this track, although he's finished in the top 10 in four previous races. Jarrett's part of the $100,000 Darlington purse is more than $22,000, which he shared with his mechanic and car owner. Ned's average speed was 115 miles an hour in a race slowed by caution flags. This victory will give Ned Jarrett enough points to make him NASCAR's national champion. His toughest competitor for those NASCAR honors has been Dick Hutcherson, who was awarded the Fireball Roberts Memorial Trophy as Darlington's Rookie of the Year. The trophy is presented in the winner's circle by Harvey Beffa Sr., Chairman of the Board, Falstaff Brewing Corporation. Every race driver wants to stand on the roof of his car and show his wife and the rest of the world how he feels about himself. Down at your feet, they're piling up trophies and people are handing you checks. Half an hour ago, nobody knew you were in the race. Except maybe your mechanics who were praying for you. Now Ned Jarrett's a part of Darlington history. A winner. And in a way, there are no winners in Darlington, only survivors. The winner is that mean old track. I learned to treat it respectfully. That's enough to learn for one year. Y'all come back. Here? <laughs>